good to be under the tent, isn't it? Praise the Lord. We're so glad to be here. And uh, I had a song or two picked out, and the song leader picked both of those. And then I thought, well, we'll do another one, and Brother Lee sang that one. And that's about all we know, I guess. No, no. <laughs> but I, that's the truth. I leaned to my wife. She just looked with a smile and said, well, the Lord didn't want you to do that. He wanted you to do something else. Not that it wouldn't bear repeating, huh? My sins are gone. Praise God. Well, let the Lord bless it to your hearts. I'm Craig Ledbetter. I'm your missionary here over in Ireland. I've uh, been here a little over 26 years now, um, but um, I'm supposed to give you a 60-second report. I don't know how to do that. We're on lack in lockdown. We're kind of supposed to stay in our houses. Um, not doing that very well because uh, the ministry calls for us to um, meet people's needs, and um, it feels weird not have not being able to assemble. But uh, I just finished Skype. Uh, using Skype to disciple a young couple, and uh, it works. Uh, we, on Wednesdays, we use Zoom to get a bunch of people together and to pray together um, and to fellowship at least a little bit. On Sunday, I preach from my dining room, um, but at least it's warmer than trying to heat up the church building. Overall, we're encouraged, and I sure hope you are too. I'm just grateful that you support us and you pray for us. Uh, you're one of my favorite churches in all the world. And I thank God for you, pray for you all the time. Um, stay the course, ladies and gentlemen. It'll be worth it all. God bless you from Ireland. Well, I'm glad we don't have to hold on for our salvation, aren't you? Yeah. Jesus paid it all. Yeah. Lester Roloff used to love this old song. It's entitled Hold On. But in this day and age, you need to get a firm grip of what you got a hold of. Let him have a hold of you, but you better hold on tight. This shaky old world we're living in is falling apart, isn't it? Aren't you glad you serve the changeless one? 
In fact, I think just before we sing Hold On, I'd like you to join with us and sing that wonderful old chorus. Yesterday, today, forever, Jesus is the same. Most of you know it. We'll maybe sing it twice for those of you who don't know it. Yesterday, today, forever, Jesus is the same. All may change, but Jesus never. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. All may change, but Jesus never. Yesterday, today, forever, Jesus is the same. All may change, but Jesus never. Glory to his name. Now you've heard it, sing it. Yesterday, today, forever, Jesus is the same. All may change, but Jesus never. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Cast all our sin in the depth of the sea, and all our transgression, whatever they be, though they mount up to heaven, though they go down to hell, he has buried them there, and above them does swell. All his ways of forgiveness, so full and so free. Thank God he cast all our sins in the depths of the sea. Amen. He had buried them there, far away from the shore, and they never will rise to trouble me more where no far-reaching tide with its pitiless sweep can stir the dark waves of God's forgetfulness deep. He had buried them there where no mortal can see. Thank God he cast all our sin in the depths of the sea. He had buried them there for eternity and time. And with the red blood of Calvary, he put out a no fishing sign. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They are gone. We are saved by the grace of God. Amen. You took the hand of Jesus, stepped out upon his promise, yet it seems you have trusted in vain. All the answer you have prayed for is on his way and paid for. Hold on a little longer. Hold on. Hold on. Pray. Testings of the Lord are pure gold. Oh, he'll take you through the fire. He'll burn out the dross and mire. Hold on a little longer. Hold on. Hold on. Pray on. Hold on a little longer. Hold on. Hold on. Believe on. looking so glum. <laughs> I'm trying my best to get a smile out of you. Let me tell you a little good news. He's one day closer today than he was yesterday. Yes. He's a coming. You're watching for his coming. You're wondering why he's waiting. Hold on a little longer. Hold on. Those clouds will soon be bursting. The Son of God descending. Hold on a little church good evening uh, good to talk to you and uh, miss you all and uh, looking forward to maybe just speaking to you a little bit uh, and uh, want to preach I'm all bottled up I want to be able to uh, share what's on my heart it, it is inc you know incredibly 
uh, I think, difficult talking to a camera. It's a whole lot easier when people are here and I can interact and, and all of that. But uh, try to do the best I can. And uh, the Lord's been burdened in my heart uh, about this thought. And uh, I think the Lord's taught me a lot through this, call what you will, quiet time. In some ways... Uh, things have been very busy. Uh, we've had a lot of calls. We're doing a lot of different things. Um, this, like this, uh, recording things, and uh, we're having meetings about what to do, and uh, uh, we're, we're getting ready to uh, launch a, a food bank here. The town supervisor, he wanted to uh, use our building. We we said, okay, we're doing everything we can to help our community, and I uh, appreciate Erica B.A. and uh, those that are involved in trying to help coordinate those things. And so we have been busy. Um, of course, uh, there's the whole school thing and all of that, and I know you've been busy. So uh, I, I understand all of that. I also understand how this is an unusual time, and uh, people need to be able to adjust and be able to get through. And so the Lord's burdened my heart about this subject, about enduring. But I want to be clear when I talk to you, and we'll get into the scriptures here in a moment, uh, on this enduring. I'm not talking about just trying to uh, hang on by your fingernails. Uh, I think we do use that word endure that way, but um, that's really not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about being able to finish and to be able to sustain and to be able to have... Uh, some gas left in the tank, kind of like when you run a marathon and you're able to get to the end and uh, not only get to the end, but you save a little bit for that end part of that race where you're able to just uh, push that last mile and that last home stretch. And so when I'm talking about enduring, that's what I'm talking about. And I think a good example is in Exodus 18, 23, if you have your Bibles, uh, you want to turn there, that's great. If not, just listen up. The Bible says, if thou shalt do this thing, and God commanded thee so, then thou shalt be able to endure, and all this people shall also go to their place in peace. And of course, we know it's talking here about uh, Moses. This is his father-in-law speaking. He's saying, Moses, you need to change what you're doing, and by doing this, then what's going to happen is you'll be able to endure. In other words, uh, Moses is going to be... 40 years in the wilderness, and he's able to get through. He's got ups and downs and good days and bad. Of course, he strikes the rock, and that's not a good day for Moses. But overall, uh, he walked with God. He, he never gave up. He led those people, and he was able to endure and have a, a, a great life. And so that's what uh, I think God has called us to uh, as Christians. We ought to have the peace of God. We ought to have that those eagles' wings, uh, when people see us, they ought to see people that are vibrant and are flying. And so I want to try to help you and uh, give you some things that the Lord has spoken to me about and how to endure. And so, uh, again, just to set the foundation, let me give you another verse about endurance. Psalm 9, 7 says, But the Lord shall endure forever. He hath prepared his throne for judgment. And so, again, just trying to cement this thought about endure, we're not talking about hanging on by our fingernails in this sense. Um, God's not hanging on by his fingernails when he talks about him enduring. Uh, it says that he shall endure forever. And so this is, a, this is a, a wonderful thing, a good thing. And this is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about endurance, having endurance and how to endure. And so um, the... Uh, let me uh, give you a few things that I would encourage you maybe to take some notes. And I know this is maybe unusual to sit in front of a, a camera or an iPhone and take notes and listen. But for now, this is the way we're communicating. And it's uh, a blessing, I think, because more than ever people are tuning in. We've got record numbers of people tuning in. And not only here, around the world. Uh, while I'm on that subject, let me encourage you to pray for our missionaries and keep them in your thoughts. Uh, and prayers, and, uh, and your giving. Uh, more than ever, they, they need you. We're going to be sending videos uh, very soon uh, from some of the missionaries, and it seems like every day I'm communicating with our missionaries, and I'm seeing uh, just what they're going through. They are not in the USA where they're so blessed, and so 
Uh, some of them are in difficult situations, and so they need your prayers, they need your financial gifts, uh, but most of all, they need your prayers. But I think if you're really serious about helping someone, then you help, and, and you sacrifice, and certainly this is a time of sacrifice. And I want to thank our church for being a, such great sacrificial givers. Uh, I'm very proud of our church, and uh, I, I think when I talk with the mayor or anyone else that uh, we can muster just a hundred people really quickly. Uh, churches of a thousand can't do that, but I think we've got the special forces. We've got the worker bees, and I, I thank you for that. But uh, let me get back to my point when we're talking about endurance. And first of all, I think we've got to be able to, um, I guess, uh, step back and understand who we are. If we're going to endure, we have to understand how we are and how we're developed and how God made us. Of course, God made us a triune being. Uh, we're made in the image of God. Uh, we're made in three parts. We're body, soul, and spirit, or probably better put, spirit, soul, and body. And so, you know, I've heard it taught in many different ways about having a, a, the spirit is so very important and the soul and... and um, even the body and, and really putting that body into subjection and, and, and an order in all of that. And I believe that. But let me give you another thought, because this is what the Lord has showed me through even this study, is these aspects of our being, they're overlapping. So one of the ways, I, or let me say this, I think it's so why it's so difficult to explain the Trinity because they're three separate parts, but you can't separate God. He's one being. And we're that way. Our body, our soul, our spirit, they're, they're intricately connected. And so when I was preparing a lesson and a message on this subject, naturally I wanted to say, this will help your body, this will help your spirit, this will help your soul or your emotions. But what I found is that they're connected. So I will at times reference the spirit and reference your, your physical being, but, but understand that we're, we're connected and all of these aspects of, of the human, uh, the human uh, body or the human spirit or the human soul, they're all connected. And so through that humanity, we have a variety of needs. Um, each aspect of our being has different needs. And... Let me say that you can't ignore any of the needs. You certainly cannot uh, ignore the spiritual. You can't ignore the, the physical. I mean, and you certainly can't ignore the, the soul parts or those emotional, those mind parts. We know the battle so many times is in the mind. And so now that we're in this unusual situation, uh, I think it's more important than ever that we just don't give in to the flesh. Let me talk about the flesh uh, here to start out just because... The flesh is always screaming. The flesh is always crying out. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Uh, the, the flesh always wants more. And uh, we've had a, a week of, of maybe, uh, for some of us, relaxation and laying around and all of that. And, hey, uh, take the break. That's good. I mean, I think uh, God puts those times of rest in there uh, on purpose. And that's not a bad thing. But it can't stay there. It can't stay uh, in this, uh, just uh, this attitude of, of just going to lay around. Uh, if we do that, we're going to be in trouble. And so we don't want to give into the flesh. Let me reference a scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, and this is uh, verse 26 and, and verse 27. Here, Paul again, he says, I therefore so run. He's talking about uh, fighting a fight and running a race. And he says, uh, I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I not as one that beateth the air. He says, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. And so he's saying, my body needs to be put in subjection. It needs to be put in a, in a lower position. It cannot run me. It cannot take over the other aspects of my being. And, um, you know, that is so very important. But also, you can't just ignore what your, your body needs. And you need to understand that there's going to be some unique things that happen during this time of, shall we say, inactivity for, for many. And so, um, you know, it's, it's uh, something that we have to kind of pay attention to. And, 
I want to give you some practical help to maybe give you some focus. Now, some of you are very self-motivated. Uh, you have companies that are um, uh, self-starting uh, and, and uh, really you're your own boss. And you may have a strength here where others are going to be uh, struggling a little bit. Those that are used to having to get up at a certain time and go to work and there's demands on them and someone's saying, if you don't get here, you're going to get fired. Um, you're going to struggle a little more. There's going to be a, a learning curve and an adjustment. But that needs to happen, and it needs to happen now. You can't wait. And uh, you need to be proactive and, and uh, take the, the bull by the horns, if you will, and uh, jump in here. So let me give you some practical help. Number one, I want you to write down order. There needs to be order in what you're doing. Uh, I've always loved the life of Joseph. I've always been amazed by uh, how God uses people and how he directs people. Um, and you'll see it throughout Scripture where God gives specific instructions. He tells Moses, this is how I want the tabernacle to be built. And it's specific. He tells Joseph specifically what to do in the time of famine and before the famine and all of that. And uh, we serve a very specific God. I still believe in that today. I believe God will give you specific instructions, whether it's giving to Faith Promise missions or uh, what you are to do uh, day by day, week by week. He'll give you specific instructions, but you have to ask him. And you have to mark it down. And you have to lay it before him and say, God, uh, help me to know what my plan is for this week, this day, this moment in time in this month. And uh, my whole world has changed. What am I supposed to do? But there needs to be order. There needs to be a, a schedule. And so um, I, I want you to be able to plan a few things each day. And if you can get that in your mind, that I'm going to plan a few things each day, maybe even each week, then I think you'll be a, a, a success and your, your, your mind will be in the right place and that will control your body. And, and, of course, the spiritual is all interwoven into all of that and the spirit is so very, very important as we've already stated. So number one, we talked about order. Let me give you some sub points or bullets underneath this, all right, in this uh, thing of order. Get up. That's my first bullet point. Get up. you got to get up. And... Uh, I think uh, when nobody's cracking the whip, it's pretty easy to stay in bed. And you'll find yourself sleeping later and later and later, and you'll say, what day is it? And you won't even know because you don't have some substance in your life, and you'll start to lose touch with reality. You'll start to lose touch with what life really is all about, and uh, that's going to make it difficult when life starts to return to normal. And there's all kinds of problems with that. Um, but you got to get up, and you got to decide on a time. And you got to say, Lord, what time am I supposed to get up in the morning? Hey, uh, maybe I don't have to get up at 4.30 in the morning, or 5.30, or 7.30. But what time should I get up? Is God okay with me sleeping till noon, staying up till 1 o'clock in the morning? I think you ought to lay that before the Lord, and uh, you need to be able to get up. You know, when I look at people that were held in captivity, uh, you can't compare us to... POWs, but we have been kind of quarantined, sequestered, if you will, and uh, people start to mentally break down and physically break down when they're held in that, in that time of pause. Uh, you see it uh, in POWs, and one of the ways they've always overcome it, whether it's World War II or any other time period that you would study, is they drilled and they had order and they had discipline throughout that time. And it helps you keep your sanity and it helps you keep you uh, reminded of who you are. And that's so very important and you need to do that. And that's all under this little heading of get up. Uh, people during this time are getting depressed. That's not good. Uh, one of the clinical ways to diagnose depression is someone that just wants to stay in bed all day. And so we want to avoid that. So do you see the importance of why it's so important just to get up and how simple that is but profound? You need to get up. And then uh, the next bullet point I have is work. Okay, now you say, uh, well, I, I can't go to my job. You can do something. God designed us to be men of action, women of action. Six days shalt thou work. And so you are going to break down mentally, spiritually, 
and physically if you don't work and do something. Now, I'm not saying that you have to punch a clock and work 8 or 10 hours a day, but what the Lord put on my heart is do something productive. I'm a person that if I'm not doing something productive, I, I start to feel like, uh, call it what you will, a failure or, or just it'll, it'll affect my emotions. And so it's amazing when you do just some little thing, uh, go out and clean the garage or vacuum the carpets or, or wash the windows, doing those little things and setting it up to say, I'm going to do this each day. Uh, it, it is so vitally important. Don't dismiss that. And uh, that will help you. It'll help you to stay motivated. It'll help you stay focused. And again, all of these aspects of our human being and our human uh, element is overlap. Spirit, soul, body, and work goes into that. And so you'll have a sense of accomplishment if you do that. And then some of you have children in the, in the home and in the house. Great opportunity to take some time with them. And I want you to pray about, Lord, what should I do with my children at this time? Maybe play a game, have a little family time. Uh, I noticed my kids asking me late in the evening, uh, Dad, can we play this? Can we play this game? And you know what happens to me at 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock at night? I don't want to play Monopoly. Maybe you do at that time. I'm a little bit more of an earlier bird, and uh, I'm much more motivated in the morning. So uh, you have to plan it. And uh, sure, sure, Joe came to me and said, hey, let's play Monopoly or Susie or someone. And we played Monopoly the other day. I whooped them, by the way. Uh, I think uh, much to their displeasure. But uh, we had a good time. I felt like uh, it was some time where we interacted. And I want to encourage you. Play a game maybe with your, your kids or do something together with them. Now's a great time to do that. And this will help you to endure. Uh, you'll be able to see... God has a big plan for this, and God's always doing many things at once. And so we've got to slow down a little bit. We've got to take it in, and we've got to be able to say, God, what do you want me to do at this time, at this hour? And uh, if you do that, I, I believe that you'll endure. Another part that you may think it's only physical, it's not, is exercise. And you say, preacher, I thought you are preaching to us about the Bible and all of that. I am. This is biblical. This is something that uh, when God talks about work and, and uh, you know, doing everything with your might, uh, you can't do it without exercising and, and uh, straining a little bit of this physical being. And uh, I know in, in 1 Timothy, uh, the Bible talks about bodily exercise profiteth little. And I think that is true. But I want to encourage you to exercise. Where we can't get to, you're going to have, let me, let me back up. On one side, you're going to have people, that's all they do is exercise. You see them running and you see them going out. And it's kind of funny to me, I've never seen so many people out there exercising. And in some ways, that's a good thing. And I would encourage you, if you're not exercising, to exercise a little bit. Take a walk. That'll be good for your head. That'll be good for your spirit. You can pray to God and, and talk to Him during that time, and you're actually helping every part of your being by doing that. But then you'll have people on this other side, this other ditch, where that's all they do is exercise, and they're, they're not thinking about what the Bible calls godliness. In 1 Timothy, the Bible says, Bodily exercise profiteth little. So it, it, it does help, but it only helps a little. But godliness is really what's important. So here we have this uh, thing that we've got to lay before, the, before God and balance it and say, God, uh, the preacher's saying, I do need to get motivated. I need to get up. I need to exercise. But God, I want to make sure I'm in the right proportion, that I'm uh, walking with you and, and that my godliness is where it should be. And my focus is godliness. But I understand I'm going to have to get up and be active to do the things that God would have me to do today. So I hope that makes sense. And that doesn't sound like a contradiction in terms. It really is not. Um, and then another thing that I think is really important for you to do, I'll say it this way, is set some limitations. Set some limitations on all of the junk, all of these things that uh, you're, you're, my goodness, I, I, it's, it's almost laughable to me because uh, I'm thinking of, of how much, 
food I've eaten and uh, bacon and ice cream and all that last week and and all of that that's this week of of just kind of staying in a little bit more than we would normally and eating it's like a a, a party week in some ways um, you know I, I laugh about uh, Governor Cuomo he's he said we're, we're trying to bend the curve we're trying to lower the curve and I, and I joke it's not working with me I, if I keep going the way I'm going this last week I mean I'm gonna be a blimp and 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 we're not we're not lowering the curve that's for sure uh, so set some limitations again a week of having a week off with the kids and eating and relaxing and all right that's fine but what we don't want to do is get into this position where we're watching TV constantly every day lounging around eating just whatever we want to eat all kinds of junk and you need to be able to take that and look at that and you say preacher why are you telling us this I mean this sounds like a self-help show that's not my intention this is incredibly spiritual because these things overlap if you're filling up with the world taking in negative news watching movies just giving into your flesh letting it do whatever it wants to do eat ice cream eat whatever you want it to eat it's going to affect you spiritually one of the ways that we say no to the flesh is we fast and we put that body in subjection that's one of the ways that the body and the, the carnal man goes down and the spiritual is able to emerge and, and here is our mind and our emotions that's kind of in between all of this and it's intricately connected and I'm telling you if you're just watching TV and giving into the flesh it's gonna affect your mind and your emotions it's certainly gonna affect your spirit and so you need to be able to take in spiritual things which I'm saving the most important for last the spiritual because it is very vitally important but if you're filling up with all this other stuff you're not gonna you're not going to be able to take in the spiritual you're not going to be able to get to that godliness that we're talking about and affecting a world that so desperately needs us at this time and so you've got to set some limitations on what you do uh, on how you do it watch what you eat watch what you do watch your actions you know uh, I, I have something that you may think is trivial but if you have vitamins take them I mean uh, especially for our seniors you, you need every help you can get uh, with this sickness um, I've already voiced my opinion in all of this uh, as far as people are saying is this overblown is this whatever I've voiced my opinion I won't do it here uh, but this does seem like it's a it's a bad flu if you get it it's starting to affect some people uh, we, we were praying the other night for brother Tony Shirley and his wife and 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 they're not well brother Kenny Baldwin I mean sick enough to have to get oxygen and all of that so that's a that's a big deal but um, some things uh, I guess can be overblown but you you still need to take care of yourself and 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 take vitamins and eat good food uh, I was joking about with my kids eating garlic I mean Italians we eat garlic and I say garlic will kill anything COVID-19 will run out of your house if you eat garlic now I don't have clinical trials for that but uh, it sure seems to work I've had so many people say it fights off malaria I had a missionary just the other day say uh, they've been feeding that to their kids and they've never got malaria so so eat the garlic hang the garlic I don't think it uh, keeps the devil out of your house it probably will keep vampires out of your house and mosquitoes uh, but in all seriousness make sure that you take care of yourself and, and you eat well so hope hopefully uh, you know you know that I'm, I'm, I'm half joking with all of that but uh, 1 Corinthians 9.25 says, getting back to this little lesson, the Bible says, And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. So here the Bible is speaking directly to the point and to our heart of what we're talking about here, body, soul, and spirit. We've got to be temperate. I'll use the word balance because balanced is a word that we understand today now you got to get the biblical perspective of balance but what the Bible is saying is with this body soul and spirit and and rest and food and uh, all of this spiritual and mental we've got to be balanced we've got to be temperate temperate is like temperature 
You've got to have the right temperature. You can't be freezing and you can't be cooking yourself. There's got to be uh, an in-between. And God's saying people uh, that want to fight a good fight or run a, a good race, they do it to, to receive a corruptible crown. They're doing it for some carnal thing, some earthly thing. But we're doing it for eternity. We're doing it because uh, we want to see uh, people uh, impacted for eternity. And I want to encourage you to, to take this seriously, what I'm talking about. Some people are going to uh, they're going to take it seriously, and others are going to sit there and say, "Ah, it just it, it just doesn't seem like this is really important." I promise you, go over this with Scripture and say, "God, I mean, I need you to to show me this." And I promise you, God will show you in the Scripture that what I'm telling you is biblical truth. God wants you to take care of this temple uh, that that houses the Holy Ghost. Uh, if you're if you're flat on your back, uh, out of commission, you're not going to be able to help people. And you've got to have the right mindset and the right emotional mind, uh, mindset, the spirit. It's all interwoven. And uh, you try to separate it. I don't know. I can't separate it. It's all kind of connected. So we have the spiritual side. And, and I want to talk to, to uh, maybe that aspect of our being, though, again, I've already mentioned, we can't really separate it entirely. There are they're overlapping. But the spiritual part, I'm going to say something uh, that you've heard many times. Read your Bible. I'm going to give you three R's. The first one, read your Bible. You say, preacher, I hear that all the time. Are you doing it? It's hard, isn't it, when you don't have uh, order, when you don't have your normal, when you sleep in and you get up and the TV's already on and people are doing this and that and you start to feel like, I'm on vacation, I don't feel like doing anything. That's why we've got to change some of what we're doing. Make sure you're reading your Bible. Set goals. Again, have order in your life. Read your Bible. Listen to a message. Boy, there's some great messages online. Uh, I would encourage you to, one of my favorite preachers, and, and I've heard him for years uh, in different places, and, and, and now we're able to watch him uh, on YouTube, is Brother David Gibbs. I think he's got so many messages of this nature, um, so many things have come to mind in the last week or two that he has preached over the years that have come to uh, be more vivid in my life. And so David Gibbs uh, from CLA, I mean, search his name, find him on YouTube, but there's many preachers. Watch our old messages from the church. Uh, listen to the legacy series that we have. Take a message in where you're getting more preaching than less preaching. In a time like this, when we're off uh, and we're not working and we're not coming to service, um, you're going to find that you're you're taking in less. Uh, there's there's a different aspect when you're in church. It's it's uh, the Holy Spirit is I think even there in a in a realer way, in a more powerful way. When we're all gathered together, when we're separated, you're going to find you're going to get some nutrition from uh, watching a message online, but it's not going to be like being at church. That's why we got to pray that we can get back to church. So all the more reason to take in a couple of messages because you're going to need double to be able to f just kind of fill that spiritual void in your life. And, and, I, and I hope that you'd consider that, to read your Bible and to spend some time uh, watching a message and, and listening to something as you're going throughout your day. So read your Bible, that's the first R, uh, under the spiritual. And then the second R is reach out, reach out. You say reach out to who? Well, first of all, reach out to God. Prayer is critical at this time. Whether you know it or not, whether you think this is an epidemic or not, uh, it doesn't matter. I'm telling you, there are people that are hurting. Probably hurting because some governments have overreacted. Uh, some states or towns have overreacted in our country, but my mind even goes to the mission field. I'm thinking of third world countries and, and Europe uh, and places like that where they have uh, locked people down into their little towns. And then you think of these people that are in third world countries. They're having even more of a difficult time, and we must pray. We need to pray for them. We need to pray for our country. I promise you, our president is under fire constantly through liberal people wanting to do evil things uh, at a time when they feel like they can use that leverage. And we need to pray for him. 
uh, something exciting is happening. I want to tell you about it. Preachers are getting to gather to pray, and uh, we've been doing this through a conference call. It's grown over the last five nights. Brother Chuck Harding has initiated it. He started it, and it's been an amazing thing to see. I know I've asked our church to pray at 8.30 p.m. our time, uh, and we did that a couple of nights this week. Uh, I've been doing that each night these last five days. Last night I was on a, that conference call, and we had, I believe, 207 preachers on that line. There was a congressman on the line. Uh, I know uh, Pastor John Wilkerson. I heard him pray on that line. Uh, evangelist Tim Green, uh, Brother Don Green's son. I mean, I'm telling you, it touched heaven last night. And um, I'm excited because I see God doing something special through the men of God coming together to pray. The congressman, who's a saved man from Idaho, uh, was overwhelmed. It, you could tell how much of a difference it made. He said, what's going on here is more powerful than what's going on uh, in the Congress, in the United States Congress. I mean, that's significant. And I'm telling you, we need to realize the power that, is, uh, that, that we have with God in prayer. And I encourage you to reach out to God in prayer. Please join us uh, at 8.30 every night this week through Saturday to pray for our country. We're praying for miracles that, that people across the nation would be able to have Easter service together and that God would help us uh, to uh, have this epidemic stopped and to be able to... Uh, go back to work across our country, and uh, I see God doing amazing things in these last couple of days. I believe in an answer to prayer. Um, stop listening to Governor Cuomo. Listen to the president. You'll be more encouraged. But more than the, the people that are in charge, God is in charge, and we need to touch heaven. So please pray. Uh, I also want to invite you Saturday night, Brother Chuck Harding said that he would invite our church to uh, call and be a part of that conference call. And so I'll let you know how to do that Saturday night. But up until then, that time, please, at the very least, set an alarm and make sure that you're in your place at that time. Stop whatever you're doing. Get alone with the family and, uh, you know, whatever. Put the phone aside and the TV aside and take time at 8.30 p.m. tonight and pray and throughout this week and I'm telling you we're gonna see God do some amazing things and then also reach out to others you know it's reaching out to God but reaching out to others and I need you to be able to reach out to others at this time the people that are in your community the people that are in our church our seniors and people that maybe I want you to think of people that only have one or two people in the home it gets lonely it gets quiet Someone that doesn't have a lot of physical strength, they can't go for a five-mile jog. They can't go for a bike ride. They're pretty much shut in. And uh, I want to encourage you to send um, videos. If you, don't have video, uh, if you don't have people's numbers, you can send, uh, you can send me the videos um, if you're comfortable with it, and I, I want you to do whatever you're comfortable with, but I'm just going to encourage our, especially our young couples, to send a 30-second video of maybe you and the children playing, doing something, and uh, if you don't have the numbers that you can send it to a senior directly, send it to me, and I'll get it out to other people so that they can have this little light. It was wonderful on Sunday to see uh, different families and and uh, be able to interact uh, just uh, through that video thing. But I want to be able to encourage you to do that. And maybe send a little something uh, once or twice a week. Or if you could send a little something every day. You're not going to overwhelm me with your text messages and your little videos. Uh, it'd be a wonderful thing and a great contribution. So I want to encourage you to do that. Uh, check on your friends. Check on people that uh, maybe uh, you know might be hurting and maybe ask what their, they, their needs are. And then I want to encourage you to maybe contact a few people that you maybe have never contacted before. And uh, if the Lord lays someone on your heart, call me, text me. Uh, if I have their number and it's available, I'll give it to you them, to give it to you so that you can contact them. And it would be refreshing for people that sit on this side of the church to be able to call someone that maybe they hardly ever talk to and just say, hey, God told me to call you today. 
I wanted to just see how you're doing. And if you're chicken and you can't call them, send them a text message and just say, hey, I'm praying for you. wanted you to know that our family is praying for you today. That would be a wonderful blessing. So reach out. And then I hurry on. The third part of this, uh, the third R is rejoice. I want to encourage you. If you're going to sustain, if you're going to have practical help to endure, you need music in your life. God inhabits the praises of men. So it's not just any music. It's not just music that serves to help your emotion or your soul or your physical body. That's what the world does. We're Christians, and uh, that spiritual side is alive, and you need that spiritual side in force right now. You need to listen to spirit-filled music, and you need to sing. And if you are embarrassed to sing in the home, if you don't have a beautiful singing voice, get in the car if you can and drive somewhere, listen to some music, and sing out loud and praise God. That will help you so much. I would recommend, again, YouTube online, you will find a lot of Ron Hamilton songs. Now, I'm not trying to get you to like what I like, but I'm telling you, God used Ron Hamilton in this era of time to put some powerful, spiritual, deep songs. These are not songs that are just written with two or three uh, crayons or colors, if you will. It is, I mean, a huge spectrum of spiritual light. And I would say, if you've never branched out into that, try it. Try it for this week. Plug in one or two of those uh, great pieces that he has put together for choir and uh, just enjoy that music and, and understand uh, just who God is and let that just fill your soul. Please pray about it. Say, God, should that be part of what I'm supposed to do today? I believe he'd encourage you to do that. And, of course, you can have other people that you like that have been a blessing to you. But music is going to be important, and you need to rejoice. We talked about stirring up that joy. This is one way you do it. Music helps you to remember what God has done for you, and you restir that joy. So just in summary here, have order, have order, and um, you're going to work God's plan. And so here are the bullet points again, order, get up, you need to get up, you need to work, we're going to do something productive every day, every day. And you say that order, you know, having God's plan is so important because you need to get your job description from God. Joseph got God's this jo the Joseph got his job description from God. This is what you're supposed to do, Joseph. Solomon, do you think Solomon built the temple without a plan? I don't think so. I mean, years in the making. Great planner, Solomon. Throughout the Bible, a lot of order, a lot of plans. So we're going to get up. We're going to work. We're going to do something with the kids if we can. And uh, if you don't have kids. Uh, be a blessing to someone else. Send them a note. Uh, just uh, You can do it by mail. You can do it by text message, uh, email, whatever thing you have. But interact with someone. Exercise. We're going to walk. We're going to run. Whatever our ability is, we're going to stretch it. And we're going to exercise some. And then we're going to set some limitations. And we talked about that on the junk, on the junk food, on the on the tv and on the iphone and everything else uh, maybe set a parameter and say i'm not going to turn the tv on or look at the phone till 10 o'clock or 12 o'clock or five o'clock at night whatever god would give you but set some parameters on the junk and some limitations and then we're going to address that spiritual directly we're going to read our bible and uh we're going to follow what god would have us to do for that great time to get back into the Bible schedule for the church. If you don't know it, text someone and just say, hey, I've been on my own schedule. I want to join in with everyone else. That gives you that sense of community when we read our Bibles together. A good book would be good at this time. And if you don't have one, uh, text me. Maybe we can find something online for you to read. I can suggest things that you can read online that would be a help to you. And then reach out. We're going to read our Bible. We're going to reach out to God in prayer and to others. And then we're going to rejoice. The Bible says, Philippians 4, verse 4, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. 
We're going to stir up that joy. And so I hope that this little study, uh, this little message, if you will, um, has made a difference in your life. And I hope that it'll, it'll help you, it'll touch you uh, in a way that only the Word of God and preaching and teaching can. And so uh, please take it to heart. Take it. Uh, as uh, a message from your pastor and what is important to do at this time. I think it's important to support leadership if it's biblical leadership, if it's right to do at this time. I think it's important. And uh, please pray over these things. Take a little time, maybe this evening or tomorrow morning, in your quiet time and say, God, I want to go over the notes that I got in this message. I want to be in compliance and I want you to direct me. God, what am I supposed to do? Help me set a plan for uh, my day in this next week to come and uh, that I might be a blessing to someone else and touch someone else's life, both from a heavenly perspective through prayer and maybe when I'm able to see them or interact with them uh, online or on the phone. Let's take a moment and pray. Dear Lord, I pray that you bless our congregation. Lord, I know there's people that are probably watching this, uh, Lord, that are even outside the United States and uh, they can't get to their churches and Lord, I'm, I'm thankful that we have this opportunity to be able to post this message. God, I pray that you'd be with uh, just uh, them in their place. Help them, Lord, to be encouraged. God, you are in control. You have everything uh, that you need uh, to be able to make decisions, God. You're not wowed by what's happening. Uh, you are in control. Lord, I pray that we would go to you, the one that knows what's going on, the government doesn't know what's going on. Uh, Lord, uh, our neighbor, what's online, uh, they don't have the information, but you do. Lord, I pray you'd comfort our hearts, encourage us, help us to make some positive strides at this time. Lord, uh, I pray that you would just bless us in a mighty way. Thank you for our church. In Jesus' name, amen.